After my trip to Six Flags over Georgia with Fright Fest going on, I found out some things that I didn't realize when I was going in and gained some experience on what you need to do and what would be best for the park. So here's some tips and tricks when going on Six Flags over Georgia and things you need to know. When going to the park during Fright Fest, a standard season pass will work for getting you into the park. Now, there's certain places like Cedar Point where the Halloween event is included. So, Halloween weekends is part of your pass when you get in, and you can do the haunted houses and everything along that with just the season pass. Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios is a separate ticketed event entirely, so you need to have a separate ticket to get into that event to be able to go to the park park at all and do the houses. Well, what I learned is Fright Fest is kind of a combination of both of those. Six Legs Over Georgia has it where a season pass gets you into the park, no problem. I have a season pass and went in, no problem, got into the park, no issues. When I went to go do a haunted house, however, I realized it's a separate ticket to go to the houses. Now that depends and is different on the night. You can go over to the website and find out what the price is for that particular night. My night was not that big of a deal, just $20 of addition. Or if you have a diamond platinum membership, I do not have one of those, that can also get you into the haunted houses. So you scan and just, it's a combination of the two. It was weird. I looked through and it said Fright Fest was included in the season pass, but that was to get into the park. So there was a little bit of confusion there. So just so you guys know, if you want to do the haunted houses, you can still do the scare zones with just your day ticket or season pass. But if you want to do the haunted houses, it is a separate ticket to do those houses. But it's not like you have to buy one ticket for one house and then another ticket for another house. That one ticket gets you in to all of the haunted houses. Now some tips that work for every single theme park in every single situation arrive early because when you get there early you get there before a bunch of people which means minimal lines so you can do more in that time. That's going to be repeated so many times on this channel for every single park and anyone who's experienced it knows why. This has been even exaggerated so much more in my trip to Six Flags over Georgia because of this lineup here, this backs you up to be able to get in. It is a slow flow in. However, what's even crazier, and I was riding the ride so I couldn't like get video or pictures because can't have a cell phone out on a ride for safety reasons, I saw a massive traffic backup Every time I looked over the road for the first few hours of getting in, I got there early, so I missed all of that. There's such a traffic backup, not only to get into the park because it narrows down to the lanes and trying to go through, but once you get into the park, that stretch of road pass into ticketing and going through, that backs up at every park so crazy on the way through so people are waiting in massive lines however if you got there early you did not wait in those lines and you could just re-ride rides during that time and be able to not only not be waiting in your car or trying to get into the park in this line you are riding rides while that is going on so you have to avoid it and it is such a difference time maker. Now, another tip along those lines is ride rides early. Now, I know you just talked about that. No, the scare actors come out at 7 o'clock, so that's when you go true Halloween. So you can get those rides in early. Now, I love night rides as much as the next person, but if you can get those rides in before any of the scare actors are out, you can get that experience a bit later. So get your rides in immediately. Then you can focus on the Halloween things. As people are trying to do rides, you can get to the Halloween events, which is very important. So say you buy that extra ticket, haunted houses, are open at the start of the park and there's no line so if you're not a big ride person you can go right to the haunted houses and you will not have to wait in any line i didn't see a single line during the haunted houses but this is also why i say ride the rides first if you're into that because the entire night i was there i never saw a long line for the haunted houses now i think that has to do with the fact that it's an upcharge in attractions but also 
there's so many people trying to do so many different things you're scattered out more so you're not missing too much of anything if you wait a bit for the haunted houses even though there appears to be no line for the houses it really doesn't get that crazy now my final tip for this video justice league battle for metropolis i have not done this ride enough to know how to max out i've actually only ridden it once and my score was not good so the tip i did get from this though is in men in black you can just hold the trigger down and that's how you shoot you need to repeatedly pull the trigger in this ride which i did not realize for the first bit so nothing was happening and then i realized oh you have to keep pulling the trigger and it will get tiring but it's what you have to do to try to be able to max out that score that wraps up this video and if you haven't already subscribe and i have a video out on the goods and bads and what can be done to improve six flags over georgia that link is down in the description so make sure you give that a watch and if you haven't already like and subscribe